Hello everybody, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're all well. Well, I've just uh, listened to the speech by the Prime Minister. Um, a lot of it about cost of living and obviously about housing. And I'm going to concentrate on, on this video about what was in the speech, and specific around housing, around affordability, how to get people, more people on the housing ladder, and what the state of play is right now, and some of the issues that I can see with his announcement and we're going to talk about some of the things that could potentially be done to help the government and help everybody else. So, <clears throat> fundamentally the government wants to look at, take a re review of mortgage availability and affordability, which I welcome, okay? And it's got harder and harder and harder to get people mortgages. As a mortgage broker, trust me, everybody at the moment is under pressure because of affordability, because properties are expensive. Now, there are lots of arguments. We're not building enough homes, and obviously prices are keeps on going up. And there is an argument to say, look, if you make, if you loosen the affordability, okay, um, then you know it's just gonna it's gonna help the property prices just climb up. Um, and there is that there is a, that's a valid argument. Um, he really wanted to concentrate on the first time buyers and getting more people on the property ladder, which I welcome. Um, he concentrated on two specific points. One of them is around housing associations and extending the right to buy. Now, we are actually experts in right to buy. I've been doing right to buy mortgages for many, many years, and we've got access to over 35 other lenders that help clients and obviously offer right to buy mortgages. I've done many videos on right to buys. All you have to do is type in right to buy. You'll probably see me on the first couple of vi first videos. Um, now, the traditional right to buy mortgage is, is a good one, which is basically the original right to buy scheme is you can get a uh, as long as you're a, you're a tenant um, with a local authority you can get a big discount up to 112,800 in some areas and then just dependent on the area so it's a big discount and then what happens is a lot of those tenants will then apply for a right to buy mortgage use the discount as a deposit and because it's such a heavy discount it incentivizes the lender to lend to them although they may be first time buyers although they might not have the history of owning properties in the past um, although their incomes or their credit profile may not be as good as somebody else however because of that security of that discount um, lenders are willing to lend to them there are other challenges with right to buy uh, local authority properties uh, historically have had problems with construction types especially if it's flats and there are lots of rules around that so I encourage you to watch my videos on right to buys but that's the normal scheme then uh, and I don't know if Boris knows about this but there is actually a scheme on housing associations it's called right to acquire again I've done a video on right to acquire and I'll leave it there but it's a bit of a damp squid scheme and I did say that on my video you can go and watch my video I did a year year and a half ago it's a bit of a crap scheme and I'll tell you why um, whereas in the right to buy you get a big discount so incentivize everybody incentivize the tenant to take the leap take the financial burden not be uh, you know securing their just getting receiving the rent take that burden become a homeowner um, it incentivize the lender because there's such a big uh, deposit in there they feel a little bit more confident dealing with a right to buy applicant um, and it works because of that incentivized everybody's incentivized so um, you know the lenders are incentivized to lend because there's a bigger level of equity so should there be a problem potentially there's enough equity to repossess and go through the legal proceedings and do so and, and protect the lenders interest uh, there's the, there's the discount so that person saying right bloody hell you know I might you know I'll get this um, I'll get this property for hundred and twelve thousand eight hundred less come on that's that's a very good incentive okay for someone who's been in living in a local authority so if they can do they do and uh, uh, niche advice we've helped many people do so right so that's great on the help to acquire which is the housing association bit the discounts are like 15 grand 12,000 pounds you know and you're buying a property for 150,000 or 200,000 15,000 pounds in the bigger scheme of things is not that much of an incentive right so and, and I know why, because housing associations, they want to keep that housing, okay? They don't want to sell that off, okay? Um, so at the moment, that the, the incentives are not quite there with the right to acquire. So the government has looked at this and said, right, um, because it's a bit skewed, because not many people are 
whether they can. I've got people that want to buy it, but when they look at it, when they run the affordability, when they do the affordability from the lenders, and of course the lenders are not that interested, you know, sometimes that's uh, not that much of a discount, okay? And all you need is a little bit of a down valuation, and all of a sudden that £10,000 or £15,000 is wiped off, okay? So the lenders are a little bit more cautious around that in terms of lending to someone, again, with the same uh, situation, really, but a lot less equity. So um, they haven't been forthcoming. They haven't really loosened their criteria on things like this. So housing associations, the government's saying, right, housing association, I'm now going to incentivize you for you to sell that property. And, and they haven't really told us what they're going to do with it. You know, are you then saying that you're going to give the, the tenants a big discount like right to buy? Is that what you're saying? If so, what's the percentage? Are you then saying, when you're talking about their incomes and being subsidized incomes, are you then saying, okay, because at the moment, um, a lot of benefits are actually used for affordability for some of the lenders out there. There are lenders that will take a, a, a you know, big chunks of benefit payments. So uh, what are they doing? So are they just using some of the housing um, element of the benefit towards the mortgage? So that needs to be given some thought, okay? So are you essentially saying you're gonna give mortgages to people that cannot afford it by themselves and you, the state is gonna essentially subsidize them? Now there is an argument to say the state is subsidizing them by paying their rent already. So I'm not against it, I just, I just, you need the details around this, okay? And if you're going to take all that stock supply out, when are you going to do this one-to-one? -one? When I, when a housing association get rid of this, when are you going to give that, put one on the market? And is that going to be in the same area? Uh, there's no point doing a housing association in London and then selling one in Hull. So it needs to, they need to give some, um, you know, they need to give it some thought here and, and really if you are going to do that, are there going to be, is it going to be a free for all uh, housing accession tenant? Is there certain criteria? Are you going to then incentivize them further by stretching out the affordability? For example, if you're a housing association tenant, will you be able to get six and a half times your income instead of being limited to four, four and a half times income or five times income? So are there going to be manipulation of the mortgage lending criteria? Um, because Johnson's speech was talking about an over, overhaul of affordability or overhaul of mortgage um, uh, mortgage uh, criteria. So does that mean that that's now going to be playing uh, on all first time buyers? Okay, there was you know there was a mortgage market review took place rightly so following all the shenanigans that happened in two thousand and eight. However, the market has moved on. Property prices keep on going on. People are having to get more and more indebted, um, and frankly, with interest rates going up, the way mortgages are stress test often you know let's say you go for a mortgage and it's three and a half percent or three percent the lender will have to further stress test that by another i don't know a couple of percent to make sure if there were rate rises that the mortgage will still be affordable okay so are they going to do away with that are they going to tweak that calculation is there a rule around that okay what happens to self-employed at the moment he touched on self-employed but he didn't really go into detail oh we're going to help our self-employed well how are you going to help a self-employed Okay, are you going to help them from a taxation perspective? Are you going to help them from an affordability perspective by putting pressure on some of the lenders? If so, what does the regulator say about this? Because you're essentially incentivizing further borrowing by people. So, really, really murky, murky, murky situation. You know, we've been we've been to a uh, you know in 2008 we went through a crash because of this type of lending. Okay, granted, not in the UK. Most of the lending was being done in uh, abroad. Okay, so. You've got to be very careful uh, and what you're offering to these people. Then he touches on um, the rental market. Okay, so there's apparently four million people renting right now. So what are you doing with them? Okay, are you then going to turn around and sort of incentivize them to buy? And how would you incentivize them? Fine, you can lean on the housing association to say you give them a discount. But I'm a landlord. Are you going to lean on me to say I have to sell my property at a hundred and fifty thousand pound discount? Is that the way it's going to be? If so, how are you going to incentivize me to do that? You know, how, how are landlords going to be incentivized? Is it tax breaks? Are you going to incentivize them uh, why, why another way? It needs to be given thought because you can't just say, I'm going to help four, 4 million people buy their properties. Okay, how are you going to do that? Okay, so is it going to be 100% mortgages? Is it going to be, like I said, income multiples, seven times, eight times, 10 times your income? Um, and if so, what's the criteria around those people? Will you lend to self-employed? Will you lend to people who have had credit issues? Will you lend to people that want to buy flats rather than houses? How has that worked? So, you know, I think this is not going to come, so, you know, 
too early. I think they'll have to go and speak to experts. They'll have to go and speak to the relevant people, and we will get a um, a review of this. You know, we have had incentives. You know, the right the the help to buy incentive uh, that came in and that helped a lot of people buy properties. Fundamentally, my argument around the help to buy was, um, you know, essentially you were allowing people that could not buy their property day one buy a property now the government took a risk and said right we're going to put some skin in the game and we're going to incentivize these people by giving them a loan by giving them a 20 percent loan by giving them a 40 percent loan in london okay so is that's what's going to happen so is the government going to say right i'm going to borrow x amount from the money markets because you know the uk's um, borrowing limits are quite cheap so the government's going to borrow a load of money and the government may incentive, is it going to be more of a shared sort of shared sh shared ownership scheme with the government uh, coming in so um it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen but don't be phoning me you know this afternoon saying right i want to take advantage of the new right to buy a government for housing association because there is one there it's called right to acquire but let's find out the, the details in you know the devil's in the detail with everything um let me know what you think about the speech let me know what you think about my points let me know if i've missed something maybe uh, and, and it'll be interesting to know you know if you've bought your right to buy if i've helped you buy a right to buy i've helped lots of people if you've bought your right to buy um if you are renting out properties that you've purchased in the past that were right to buy uh, if you are a housing association tenant or someone who's renting as a first-time buyer what do you think should be done in terms of helping people at the end of the day that's my business i want people to buy more properties okay but you know we've got to we've got to give it some details as well is we don't want people getting in trouble because they were incentivized wrongly um i'll catch you on the next one take care all the best the content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.